So hey, I have a question for you. Question. A lot of times you close an email with stillness. I do indeed. And we wrote a book together. Yes, we did. Into the stillness, uh, which is really almost a recipe, command, even, into the stillness. Get in there, into the pool. Um, but when you, when you read, uh, you know, in Buddhist or Vedanta uh, or Sufi literature, you tend to read about the self, capital S. Mm. And uh, I was wondering if you could talk about the different possibilities opened up by thinking about that, capital T, mm -hmm. as being the self, mm -hmm. capital S, versus that being the stillness. Yeah, it's really um, different techniques to try to capture ways in. And I think if you can visualize a big capital S self in which you are much inferior to that, very small compared to that, then you can see, this is kind of a Bhakti approach now, that in fact what you would, could do was you would say, well, I can either be down here and self is up there, or I can merge into self, into big self. And one of the great bhakti techniques for non-duality is to do exactly that. I mean, to allow self to so fill you, big self, to so fill you that it displaces little less self. It's Mother like, Teresa says we have to become empty yes. so that God can fill us. Exactly. Yeah. And so it becomes that sense of, of actually going through an exercise, which I found very useful, was to, to get an iconic figure or else because you can't just, I just couldn't imagine big as self. So I had to have an iconic figure, you know, Noam Maharshi, uh, that you could somehow become as one. There was no difference in between you. There was no energy here that wasn't contained within that particular iconic image. And that allowed you to get rid of some parts of the little less self that you couldn't get rid of before. But that's a way into stillness, which is only a way to try to capture what's uncapturable. I mean, what this thing feels like. And I've, I think we've all tried different words to try to say what's it, what's it like. It's not like big ass self to me doesn't give me something I can feel as. When I say stillness, that says something to some part of the entity. It says, okay, that's so different from what most people's life is. When I mean, you say, be still, it's like, oh, I'm not still. Life is really, oh, oh, oh. And so I say, well, okay, be still. Do you realize you can be still? Just be still and know that I'm God. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's the thing from Psalms 46.10. Yeah. Be still and know that I'm God. And it's that sense of, okay, that is, if you pick God as self, big self, then it's be still and know that I am God. And so it's basically heading into the same direction through basically kind of a command like be still just yeah. be very very well it still. gives you something to do yes be, be just practice see yourself and then see yourself be, imagine yourself being still and just see if you can move towards stillness and see how you aren't still and then recognize that that may be a maybe the vehicle into finding your way into God I find it uh, much more effective because it's than self, because it's naming an experience that anyone can have. Mm. They, they, they may have resistance to it. Mm -hmm. uh, they may find it at first kind of challenging or daunting, mm -hmm. but stilling themselves is possible mm -hmm. for everyone. And the more you still yourself, the more you feel the stillness, mm -hmm. the less stillness feels like the absence of something else happening. Mm -hmm. And you start to experience the stillness as its own generative positive force, exactly. right? And the more you can feel the stillness as a generative positive force, then the whole idea that you're alone and isolated and alienated becomes kind of laughable. Because no matter what, within the to and fro of everyday life and the hue and cry of everything, you still yourself, you chill yourself, as it were. There it is. There's the stillness. The stillness never goes away. And that it's only this kind of 
habit of thought that we have of thinking of stillness as being that which occurs when nothing is going on mm -hmm. instead of thinking that out of which absolutely everything emerges, right? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth really out of the stillness. Yeah. The stillness is the main ingredient, as it were. So that allows us to undergo this kind of metanoia transformation where instead of seeing all the stuff of everyday life as, the re as reality, mm -hmm. you can experience stillness itself as the generative reality of your life. So I found it to be a path unto itself. You know, if, if, if you mm -hmm. simply, if you had to, if, you know, if I had last words of saying, you know, what, what can I do to, you know, to get out of this life? Just, just be still. Well, and, and the, the thing about, and I harken back to the Christian stuff, I'm not, I'm, we've done our dance with Christianity. Um, to me, that's, that's the, the good news of that one sentence, mm -hmm. is people are saying, if I get still, it'll be hellish. Mm -hmm. I will have nothing to do, I will go crazy, because there's nothing there but a horrible void, this is the Buddhist interpretation now, that will swallow me up and I'll be uh, uh, beyond imagination. Unhappy, or I'll shock myself. Unhappy, I'll shock myself, <laughs> not be still in those studies. But here it says, okay, be still and know that I am God. And so what it says is if you can get yourself really, really still, it's not a horrible void, it's not some place that, you know, terrible creatures come out and rip your heart out. It is really the pathway into experiencing whatever you visualize God to be. Uh, and just open into that space just by being more and more still and open out into that divinity. And there's a kind of equal sign between stillness and knowing, right? We tend to think of knowing as like, oh, I have to figure something out, I have to, you know, work out an argument or parse an equation, or, you know, I have to do some sort of cognitive activity in order to arrive at a, something like knowledge. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's saying, no, yeah. if you will be still, you will know mm -hmm. God. Yeah. yeah. And that's very counterintuitive, but that's where we, we just, would have to just ask somebody to just try it. Well, and, and the knowing yeah. is such an important word too. Yeah. Because it'd be still and know. It yeah. isn't like understand, write about, feel, discourse about, feel. It's know. Yeah, exactly. You will know. There's, there's some, certainty there. There's some great Bhagavad Gita verses about, about you know, if you can get your devotional level down, surrender, deeply surrender into whatever the infinite is for you, then you can see, understand, no, and also even enter into God. Mm -hmm. You can actually not see and know, but you can actually enter into. And indeed, one knows precisely because in being still, there's no barrier between oneself That's right. and God. That's right. There's nothing the knowing going occurs on. because there's no barrier. There's no barrier. So by being still, you know, being still. Yeah. is the pathway to Gnosis, you know, what they That's call right. the Greek tradition, right. Gnosis, or the Jhana Yoga. Yeah. Right. Um, and it sounds simple, but it ain't easy. No, but it couldn't be. It's, but look yeah. at it as a vehicle. Yeah. You know, maybe one of the best vehicles in. Yeah.